Welcome to another edition of Our City. A few things going around the city of Elizabeth this week. Keep in mind that tomorrow, Tuesday, is Veterans Day and City Hall will be closed. And at 11 o'clock in the morning, I'll be attending the Veterans Ceremony in front of City Hall. Uh, the Elizabeth Veterans Day Committee will be putting that together in Winfield Scott Park. And on Wednesday, November 12th to November 14th, I'm going to be at a sea level rise conference. And this conference will talk about uh, coastal cities on how they deal with the rising tides. On Wednesday, November 12th at 2 p.m., the County of Union will hold a memorial ceremony exhibition via the Civil War veterans. Uh, it'll be held at the Union County Courthouse in the assignment judge's courtroom. The Greater Elizabeth Chamber of Commerce that evening will host an after hours business networking event at the Terminal One Sports Bar, 566 Spring Street. And on Friday, I'll be at the Boy Scouts of America Service Awards. This presentation will be made at the Portuguese Instructive Social Club. On Saturday of this week, the Portuguese Deportes Anniversary Dinner will be held at the Arches Hall, which is next to the Old Sacred Heart, Our Lady of Fatima Church, located at 403 Spring Street. And also that night, the Portuguese Leo's Black and White 18th Anniversary Dinner will be held at the Portuguese Instructive Social Club. And on Sunday, November 16th, I'll be pleased to join the Our Lady of Fatima Girl Scout troop in honor of their 37th anniversary. And this also will be held at the Arches, located at 403 Spring Street. So if you need more information concerning these events in the city of Elizabeth this week or any other event, please call our public information office at 820-4124. Please stay with us. And after these messages, I'll be joined by Joe Long, the bassist guitarist for the Four Seasons, and Councilman at Large, Frank Cuesta. <music> some of the finest teachers in the country. And then they graduate. Kane University. Welcome back to our city. And I'm pleased to be joined by Joe Long of the Four Seasons and Councilman at Large, Frank Cuesta. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mayor. Nice Thank to be you. here. Good to see you guys again. Uh, Good to see you again, Mayor. Now, before the show, Joe <laughs> said that I shouldn't ask you any questions, Frank, because you don't have any answers. Well, I, I, I wouldn't say that. I, have, uh, uh, I prefer that Joe gives you most of the answers, but I, I can talk a little bit. Okay. Now, the two of you met because we designated a street in Joe's honor. Frank, what was it like when you called Joe and said, Joe, we want to remember your commitment to our city? It was an incredible experience. Uh, he was very humbled by it. Uh, he was shocked, actually, that uh, John Moretti, who, who initially came with the idea, w would actually consider uh, such a recommendation. He was thrilled. He was very happy. Because I said to John, listen, we have to make sure he's okay with it. I mean, who wouldn't be? But I said, we cannot do anything. I cannot proceed in city council until we talk to Joe first. And we did. And he was very excited about it. And so were we. Now, Joe, you grew up in Elizabeth. Now, what, what, I have nothing to say. He said it all, man. He said it all. See? <laughs> and we told him not to say things in the beginning, <laughs> you, right? You, you said he doesn't have any answers. What I told you was he doesn't have the right answers. I didn't want you to ask him questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you, yes, Mayor. Joe, you grew up in Elizabeth. I, yes, I did. And Proud you were fortunate enough to play with the Four Seasons for 11 years. 12. 12 years. Who's counting? Who's counting? That's okay. <laughs> when did your interest in music start, Joe? Uh, when I was a kid. Um, both my mom and dad had brothers who were musicians. And I grew up in my mother's mother's house, my maternal side. And uh, three of her brothers played instruments, so there was music going on almost every day. So as a kid, I would hear rehearsals. I would hear the radio, always playing the, the latest uh, music on the radio. And so very early on, uh, I developed an interest. But I can't forget my father, who at the age of six, when I was six, he said, you will go out and you will learn to play the accordion. So, you know, it wasn't a, a request. <laughs> he kind of said, this is what you're going to do. But you so, didn't play the accordion. I, accordion, was, accordion was my first instrument. Your first instrument. Yep. But you graduated to the guitar, the bassist guitar. Uh, I stayed, well, I went through accordion to the other keyboards, piano, organ, such. Uh, and then an accident to my hand uh, kind of uh, put an end to my keyboard playing. So that's when I switched to the bass. And the accident occurred, you worked for singers? Is mm -hmm. that where you yeah, were? Yeah, yeah. Tell, tell, I mean, people hear about singers and they read about it, but you, you worked there when it was 
a, a hub of business it, activity. It was a hub, all right. <laughs> no, it, it was crazy. Um, I, I, they, must have, they, they must have had four or 5,000 people working here at the time, down on Trumbull Street, I believe. Um, typical factory environment, loud and dirty and, and dark, you know. Uh, and I, I suffered an accident there uh, to my hand, uh, a pretty bad accident, as a matter of fact. And uh, uh, because, I didn't, because I lost full use of the hand, uh, I had to switch my, 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 my instrument. So I switched to bass. Uh, and at first I was kind of self-taught. Uh, and then what, as I became more interested in music, as, I, as my musical interest rekindled after the long uh, series of, uh, of operations, uh, then I start taking formal lessons. So you actually took lessons and studied music? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I, I started studying when I was six. There, were, there was a, a Paramount School of Music down on Elizabeth Avenue. It was my first, uh, first place that I studied. Adele Loxman was my teacher. Uh, then when I went to, to bass, uh, I went to study with a classical bassist, Alphonse Straza, who at the time was the uh, principal bassist for the New York Philharmonic. Um, at the time, I, I, I thought that I wanted to, to have a career in, in classical music. But the accident to the hand, the hand wasn't strong enough to, to stand the rigors of classical music. Uh, so I, I switched to jazz and then ultimately to rock and roll. And so, Joe, uh, your, your connection with the Four Seasons, that started, I remember during when we, we could talk about it later, mm -hmm. it started with an interview. Yep, sure did. Uh, I had an agent from Rollway who was my, my agent for a band that I had called The Rockets back in the 50s. That band, uh, he, he, stayed my, he, he remained as my agent through the, 60, uh, through the early 60s. And when, um, when the seasons were looking for a bass player and bass singer, uh, my agent, his name was Frankie Fame, called me because he was also booking the uh, Four Seasons when they played local jobs like Seton Hall or like Kane. Uh, and he, he, Frank, my agent told, Tom DeVito, the guitar player for the seasons, uh, that he had a guy that he thought might be uh, the right fit. And so, that, so I, I interviewed with Tom DeVito, and uh, he, uh, I guess he liked what he heard because he then uh, had me meet uh, uh, Frankie Valli and Bob Gordio, and they, uh, they took me on. And so for 12 years, what, what was the first song that you actually worked on that, uh, were they a hit when you joined? Were they? Oh, they were number one. They, they were, were number one when you joined them. Number one in the, in the world, I in guess. The wor yeah. Yeah. Uh, the first recording I made <clears throat> was a Beech Nut Spearmint Gum commercial, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which made a few bucks, you know, made a few dollars. Right. But the first uh, commercial song that I appeared on was uh, a song called Opus 17. Uh, big hit, but everything was a hit back then. Everything the, the seasons recorded was a hit. So Opus 17 was my first. What were the what were the uh, the biggest struggles with the four seasons? Was it travel? Was that tough? Eventually, in the beginning, while the group was having hits, we didn't travel that much. Oh, really? We spent most of the time in New York in the studio. Uh, it's 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 like a seesaw, you know. If, if you're making a lot of money uh, on records, you don't have to make that much money in, in a personal. When the um, when the records start to dry up, then you have to earn a little more money uh, on the road. So in the early years, uh, I was out maybe thirty or forty days a year. But then by the late 60s, we spent more and more time on the road. Then, as you asked it, then it became a rigor. Then it was tough. So did you have a musical inspiration, Joe, growing up in, in the 50s or 60s? And who, who, my, who, who might they be? Yeah, my, I guess my first, uh, my first inspiration was Frank Sinatra, uh, the ultimate performer. Did you meet him? Yeah, we worked with him for, yeah. uh, for about a year. Yeah. And, uh, but as a kid, his voice was everywhere. His records were everywhere. His, he was on, you know, on mo in the movies, and uh, and it was a great it was a great influence on anybody that that ascribed to being in the business. Uh, I also had other uh, other uh, uh, influences um, as my taste began to drift over toward blues and jazz. Ray Charles became an uh, an influence. Uh, the Four Freshmen, because then I I was starting to get into harmony vocal, so the Four Freshmen. Uh, became important to me. Uh, and so I just, you know, I just kind of like kept listening to what was happening uh, in music. And, and my, my tastes and, and my uh, 
aspirations changed with the, with the changing of music. So Joe, being a little younger than you, there's always these stories about uh, four guys hanging on a corner and singing and a cappella. And uh, was that true back in the fifties? Was that was that a lot of ways people absolutely. expressed themselves musically? Absolutely. I, I I graduated Thomas Jefferson High School and I belonged to the Glee Club in, in Jeff. So it wasn't unusual for other guys in the Glee Club and, and I to get together after school, you know, stand on the corner of Elizabeth Avenue and DeHart Place, is that DeHart? I forget what, or whatever, and, and sing. Uh, or Christmas time, we would uh, put together a bunch of Christmas songs and travel the neighborhood and, and sing. Or we'd gather in front of Spiritos and sing. Yeah, that was, that was definitely true back then. It was. Because uh, we see it in movies today and we're like, that it really happened. Great. It, it, it was true, and it was a great time in my life. So, Councilman, your relationship with Joe has grown over the last couple of months. When you first went to see him, uh, what was it like when you knocked on this door? I mean, you being from Cuba, did you know even who the Four Seasons were? Oh, of course I did. I didn't know. I mean, you came I over at, at that time. Anyway, I grew up in the 60s and early 70s. Uh, I was a teenager and then going to college and high school. And uh, the Four Seasons was, was always one of my favorite uh, groups. Uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of Cuban Americans love the Four Seasons, so that was not as unique. much as they like the Yankees. For me. As much as I like uh, the Yankees. Well, you know now, you know <laughs> the Yankees are something else. That's we right. can't talk about the Yankees yeah, this year, Mayor. Right. 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 <laughs> but I have to tell you, Mayor, before I forget, I didn't realize that Joe and I had something else in common. I too graduated from Thomas Jefferson, but I worked at the singing company uh, for several months uh, back in the uh, '70s. You did? Yes, I did. Uh, I was going to school and I was working the same company at night. So uh, I, I don't I know, didn't know that. that, but I did. Another Several singer months. alumnus. Another singer alumnus. Yes. Yeah, I, I, it was closed by the time I was of working age. So, but I didn't. He closed it. He I closed did. it. Yeah. Did. You wanted to go there and he made a call and he closed he it closed down. It. Like he yeah. does all the on restaurants. Monday. On, on a Monday, I closed it. He's on Monday. You closed it on a Monday. Because <laughs> I probably wanted to serve you guys lunch. <laughs> yes. And they couldn't do that. So, so Joe, you, you make the Four Seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, you're a kid from Elizabeth. And then all of a sudden you're listening to the radio and you hear you. Mm -hmm. what, yeah. what is that like? First time I heard myself on the radio. Uh, well, first time was that Beach Nut commercial that I talked about. But the first time I heard my record, a record that I was on, I was driving on, on the parkway heading, I was living uh, at that time up in, in Essex County, and I was driving from Elizabeth, my mom's house, back home, and the song came on the radio, and uh, I'll tell you, Mayor, if there was anybody on either side of me, they would have, they would have had it, you know, I thought, whoa, <laughs> you know, it, it was a thrill, it was, it was really, really an experience. Uh, but you know, we become so jaded. Because, you know, after that first record, then it was, oh yeah, that's uh, yeah, I remember that one. That's, that song that's, that's him, yeah. But that's uh, me. But that first one was really exciting. So, and you were a member how long in the band? Twelve years. I, I joined them in late '64, and I left them in late '76. And then, then you went on and did other things, right? Yeah, I, I stayed in music for a while. Um, put together a, a, a seven-piece rock and roll band, and we toured up and down the coast. Uh, we were offered a, a, a record deal, but it meant traveling down to Brazil. Um, and I had a, two of the kids in the group were brothers, and they were kids, they were young, young boys, and they didn't want to leave home. Uh, and it kind of took the, the wind out of, the, out, of the, the sail, or out of our sails. So that group disbanded, and uh, I retained two of the members from the group, hired a drummer, and I formed a, a jazz band called Jersey Bounce. We called it Jersey Bounce. And that again, we traveled the coast, played Atlantic City, played in Florida, uh, New York, played a lot in Manhattan. Uh, good band, fun band. Uh, when that thing ran its course, uh, then I just kind of lost, uh, lost interest. Uh, I, I was tired by that time. Yeah. yeah. So, Councilman, since you remember the Four Seasons, tell us some of your favorite thoughts on Joe Long and the Four Seasons. Well, I'll tell you, there's one song that I really love that is called Let's Hang On. And, and, and of course, after I met Joe, I even loved the song more because in that particular song, not only do you hear him singing, but he's playing and he plays in a way that is really awesome. And, and John Moretti and I have talked about that many times. So that's why we selected that song as one of the ones that we displayed the day that we, uh, um, we named the street after him. So what did you think of that song? Was that one of your favorites? Or do you have a favorite, Joe? Yeah. You do? That was not one of them. That was not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> what does he know, right? He does he know. Might have been one of his, but it wasn't one of yours. <laughs> my favorite was I've Got You Under My Skin, oh. uh, which 
uh, first of all, it was a song that was written back in the 30s by Cole Porter, one of the great American songwriters. And secondly, um, up to that point, we were known as a teeny bopper group. You know, we played the colleges and we played the schools. Young kids loved us. He was a young kid at the time, that's why he liked us. But uh, under my skin, suddenly the adult said, wow, I know that song, yeah, that, let's, let's go hear them play. And it opened up a whole new world for us. We began to become more of a, uh, of a, a middle of the road group rather than a, a teenage group. So yeah, that was my, my very was favorite. Thing. Joe and Frank, uh, stay with us. We're gonna run up some commercials and we're back to talk more about the naming of the street. Please stay with us after these messages, back with more with Joe Long from the Four Seasons and Councilman at Large, Frank Cuesta. Welcome back to our city where I'm pleased to be joined by Joe Long of the Four Seasons and Councilman at Large, Frank Cuesta. So Joe, one of the things we're talking about at the break is, are you still in touch with any of the other members? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the original guitar player, Tom DeVito, and I are very, very close. Uh, one of my dearest friends. We stay in touch, constant touch. Uh, I speak to Frankie and, and, and Bob Gordio occasionally. In fact, I saw Frank a, a couple of weeks ago down in Atlantic City uh, in concert, uh, and it was good seeing him again. I hadn't seen him for, for a few, few years. But uh, yeah, I do stay in touch, but Tom is, is my main man. He's, Tom, you yeah. used to, it's still close. And he's the guy that I first interviewed Interviewed with, with him, right? Mm -hmm. And he's in, where, he's in Vegas? He lives in Vegas, but true to his roots, he comes back to Jersey every year. He's from Belleville. And uh, he goes and hangs with the guys, you know, and uh, he's never forgotten uh, where he's from. So he, he, it's very important to Tom to get back to New Jersey every year. So when the city decided to name a street after you and Councilman Cuesta knocks on your door with John Moretti, what, what was your thought process? Come on, you're kidding me. What are you talking <laughs> about? That street, what are you? Now, I, I, was, I was humbled. I was honored. I was flabbergasted, you know, all of, all of the above. It's, it's, a, it's a great honor, Mayor, and uh, I don't think it happens to too many people. No, that it doesn't. Yeah, and, uh, and by the way, you and the city <laughs> did a marvelous job. I, I, you know, I, I couldn't believe the whole presentation. It was just fantastic. But, but you know, I still, I'm still buzzing. And this is what, three or four months down the, you know, yeah, after the July. fact. I still think about it. And I have pictures on the wall now and the, and the proclamations and the, and the dish. <laughs> uh, and when I, you know, when I see these things, it, it still excites me. You know, it's something I'll never forget. So, so Councilman, your role in the planning process of the street uh, was an active one. You were the one that led the effort. Tell us how you got it going. Well, uh, my good friend John Moretti uh, and I were uh, having dinner one night, and he said that sometimes we do not recognize enough people from Elizabeth who, who have done well and, and, and uh, that make the city proud. And he mentioned uh, uh, Joe Long's name. And um, so I told him that I would have to speak to you, and if you recall, and, and then I would have to propose it to the city council. Uh, you were very excited by the idea, and when I discussed the, uh, uh, this idea at city council, every single member uh, felt that it was great. Uh, now, at the time, uh, the movie, The Jersey Boys, was just coming out, so it was a very, the, the timing was great. Um, so city council embraced the idea, and, and we contacted several members of the community in Peterstown that were excited about it, uh, like Johnny Sacco, and who actively participated uh, in, in, the, in the street naming. So it was really a team effort. It's one of the reasons I was so so happy with it because it, uh, it, it took uh, your office, city council, and members of the uh, business community and the community, community at large to put it together. So that's one of the things that I was proud of, that it was not just my idea or John Morita's idea. Uh, it, it was really a community event, and that's why it turned out so good. So did, speaking of Jersey Boys, have you both seen the play or? Yeah, I've, seen, so, it, I've yeah. seen it a number of times. Yeah. What do you? Th I, I have, I have seen it three times myself. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Is it great play? Yeah. It's a, yeah. It's it's a, close to reality, Joe. Mm, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, certain aspects are, are certain, close. Yeah. The timeline was was skewed. Uh, yes. Uh, quite uh, radically. Uh, but uh, but other events. The time. Uh, the chronological. Yeah. Yeah. Of this stuff. Yeah. There. Yeah. Uh, but other events were very accurate. Uh, and I think the success of the play uh, was based on the fact that it wasn't a bunch of songs uh, wrapped around a, 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 a story. No, I'm sorry, I got that backwards. It wasn't a, a, a story wrapped around a bunch of songs. The main thing here was 
the story was very, very strong, and the songs were incidental, I think. Uh, there were other uh, jukebox musicals, as they called them, that failed because they, they put too much emphasis on the songs. We all knew the songs, you know, we all know Billy Joel's hits, Frank Sinatra's hits, Four Seasons hits. So we don't have to go to Broadway and spend a couple of hundred bucks to hear those songs. We can, we can listen on the radio or go see a concert. But Jersey Boys had a, has a strong storyline. People love the story. Story about four guys from Jersey uh, who half of them were in trouble most of their lives. Uh, they went, you know, the typical rags to riches. It's a strong story. That story holds up any time. And of course, the songs became incidental to that. And I think that's what made the, the play uh, so powerful and so strong. That's a really good observation because a lot of people probably would, wouldn't see it that way, but I, now that you say that, exactly right. Mm -hmm. A lot of people would say, hey, the music was good and it was right. kind of like listening to couple other guys perform hits that were 50 yeah, right. years old, but you're right, the storyline is a powerful storyline. It line. is. So, uh, do you still play now, Joe? Do you get together, fool around at all? I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm getting back into playing. I got a bass and a, and, a, and a small amp, and I'm trying to get the fingers back in shape. But what I'm doing, uh, in order to stay active in the business, uh, I'm working with, a, with a, a Jersey band called Jersey Four, and they're a Four Seasons tribute band. So they go out and they do a Four Seasons show. They dedicate the show to the to this music of the Four Seasons, and I'm uh, working as their acting as their uh, uh, musical director, and uh, and every once in a while I'll get up there on stage with them and you sing will. a couple of songs. Yeah. yeah. So it's fun. It's fun to do that. It's it's also uh, a means for me to keep my, my my hands in the business so I don't lose that that little edge because you know. Once a ham, always a ham. You know, you know, you, you really want. You don't want to get away from it totally. So, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind. So when of, you get up on stage, Joe, and you do, do you reminisce? Do you, a lot of thoughts must go oh, through absolutely. your mind yeah. right after that. Yeah, absolutely. Are you yeah. going up? Yeah, I get, you know, the first thing that happened. The first thing that I think of is what's Frank Cuesta doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then after I decide that he's closing restaurants <laughs> all over all over on Union Mondays. County <laughs> on Monday, <laughs> on Monday, because he doesn't. Or any, no, any day, any day, Labrasia is going <laughs> to be yeah, in town. Yeah, when Joe's going to close the restaurant. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, I think of those years, all those years that I, they actually did it, and. Uh, you know, there's no better business than, than, than show business where, you know, people show their gratitude, show, they acknowledge what you're doing dynamically, right on the spot. They, they applaud, they cheer, they yell, or they boo. Uh, but you know immediately you didn't get how booze, you did you tell? <laughs> once in, once or really? twice. Really? <laughs> no, I can't no, believe it, your no, music, no. no. Never, never got booed. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I think, you know, a lot of thoughts go through my mind when I'm, when I'm on stage. So... If you didn't go into music, what would you have done? I would have become a pharmacist. And uh, not too many people know that, but uh, uh -huh. one of my dearest friends at the time in high school, Bob Asner, and I uh, planned on going to, to, uh, to, to, to a pharmaceutical college, to pharmacy, to study pharmacy. To study, do you study pharmacy? I think you do. I, I guess think you, you do. study yes. pharmacy. Okay. I didn't want to. I don't want to say the He's wrong thing. He's an educator. He should That's know. Right? That, well, I turned to him. Did you <laughs> notice? I turned right away to question. Uh, but. Uh, couple of things intervened. First of all, my dad got sick right after I graduated. Uh, I had to go to work. That's why I wound up in Singers. I had to go to work to support the family. Um, never got to college until some years later when I took some musical courses at uh, Kane, at, um, Kane, at uh, Berkeley up in Boston. But uh, as, as time went by uh, I, and I had to continue working, uh, college just became, uh, you know, just got further and further in the background. Bob did go on, Bob Asner, my friend, did go on to become a pharmacist. So half the dream was realized. Right. Uh, while I was convalescing from the, from the accident that I had, that I suffered at Singer's, which involved three surgeries and, uh, and a bunch of, uh, a, a long time at, uh, you know, in therapy, uh, that's when I rekindled my interest in music. So then pharmacy was just out of the question, you know. Joe, I want to thank you for taking the time uh, to join us on the show. It's been it's fun been a pleasure. reminiscing and talking, and I appreciate you coming back to Elizabeth. Thank That's you, Joe. My pleasure, man. Councilman Cuesta, thank you for joining us, and thank you for the friendship you've formed and bringing here to the city of Elizabeth and the renaming of the street that we did. It's been a pleasure, Mayor. Thank, thank you for you. having me.
For Councilman at Large Frank Cuesta and Joe Long, the bass guitarist for the Four Seasons, I'm Chris Bolwage. We'll see you next week on another edition of Our City. Where will the next generation of scientists come from? Right here. Kane University.